today we are going to be doing um, a new like topic in our same unit, and it's going to be called. Okay, I hope that this works because I've been having real problems with this. Dimensional analysis. So what we are going to use to get through this concept is we're, we're basically going to be converting units from one unit to another. So sometimes we call this unit conversions, it really is the same thing. Um, but while when you're doing unit conversions, you could easily just Google it and figure out what the new unit is. The reason we're going through this whole method is so that we can practice with these easier concepts because when we get in a little bit to the chemistry that is involved, the chemistry itself is hard to figure out. So if we can learn how to make our brains think in this way, it'll make the chemistry part of it easier. Okay, so dimensional analysis is used so that our units will cancel out. Units will cancel if they are in opposite places on different fractions, or on the same fraction, it doesn't even matter. Um, so units cancel out if they are on in, perhaps, opposite places in fractions. So I am going to force you to do this the way that I want you to do it. I know that you could take your phone out and say, hey Google, how many inches are there in three and a half meters? And Google will instantly tell you. That's not the point. The point is not so that you can know how to convert you something. The point is not to learn how to do something that you can easily do with the device that's in your pocket. The purpose of it is to train your brain and force yourself to go through canceling out units in this way because the complicated chemistry we get to in two weeks will not make sense unless you can figure this out. So yes, you could give me on your homework that I'll be giving you at the end of class today, you could give me the answer in probably five minutes to all of the homework problems by using Google. That's not the point. The point is not the correct answer, although getting the correct answer is important, the point is to learn the process. Okay, so over here on this board, we have the rules for how you're going to um, use unit conversions. I'm going to write them over here because I am recording this for my friends who are not here today. So the first thing that you will always do is start with what you're given. So your problem will give that to you. That's why it's a given. And that will be your numerator. <coughs> over one, which will be your denominator. As I'm going through the process of showing you how to do this, I'm going to do an example as well. Okay, so let's say that we have 315 feet, and we want to know how many miles that is. Obviously, the, we could get the answer by using Google, but that's not what we want to do. That's not the point. Okay, so the first thing is to start with our given number as the numerator over one. So how will that look? It'll look just like this. 315 feet over one. Why do we need to do that? Um, why do we need to put that one as the denominator? Just as a placeholder. 
It's to keep the math tight for us. Now, this second step is one that you'll repeat if you have to do it multiple times, and I'll explain that as we go through. But the second step is that whatever your unit is on the top of the first fraction goes on the bottom of the next fraction. So the numerator unit becomes the denominator unit. of the next fraction. God bless you. Y'all are allergic to chemistry. Yes. Okay, so now all we're going to do for this step to get started <coughs> is to look at this previous fraction. If feet is the numerator, feet now becomes the denominator. That's how you do step two. Step three says to use your yellow sheet and the number from your yellow sheet must stay with the unit that is next to it. We'll do an example of this. Like we'll do many examples over and over until you can figure that out. Because I think that that really is the hardest part. Like knowing where the numbers and the units go. Yes, cool. You may. Okay, so let me just now go back and use um, my, um, oh, that would be number three. Let me use my yellow sheet and see what I can figure out here. Okay, so feet and miles are both part of the English measuring system. So there are two <coughs> systems of measurement that the world uses. The English system, which now only Americans use, and the metric system, which is what everybody else uses. So on your yellow sheet, you'll be able to see that I've broken this up for you. In this box here, you have just English. So if you gotta go English to English, stay in the <coughs> upper left box. Here is where you're going to go between English and metric. We'll do this in a little bit. And then here is the whole metric system. Did you guys have to memorize the metric system for any other class? Have you ever had to do that? Okay, good. You don't have to do that now either. Yay. It'll all be here for you. Okay, so let's look at the upper left box. Can you go from feet to miles in one step? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yay. Okay. So on my sheet, it says that one mile equals... 5280 feet. So now here is where this step comes in. Number and unit must stay together. If I'm saying that feet has to be the unit on the bottom, what number has to be next to feet here? The 5280. The 315 only will appear one time through canon. That is one of the most common mistakes I see people make. Thank you for making it. So once you've written that 315 down, pretend that you don't know about the 315 anymore, okay? So here, we've used the 5280 feet as our denominator. What goes on top of this fraction, though? Mason? One mile. One mile. Okay, so now we're going to use the dimensional analysis principle that we've been learning about. If the units are on opposite sides of a fraction, they cancel out. So then what are you left with? You're left with miles. Is that the unit you're looking for? Yes. It is. So now we can just do the math. Okay, so take your calculator out and do this math. It'll be 315 times one, which would be 315, right? So we don't need to type in the times one. Divided by... Do you have any triple A's? I don't. <coughs> I don't have any triple A's. <coughs> Do you need a calculator? Okay, so I get for an answer for this 0 0.05965. 
What is the unit that you should have at the end of this number? Miles. Good. 15 divided by what? 52 80. Now, you should always have a unit at the end of your number, but you should ask yourself another question. How many significant figures should this problem have? Hang on. Hang on. I'm just going to write the rule for this down really quickly. So your rules for significant figures, um, the number of sig figs in your number, equals the number of sig figs you should have in your answer. In other words, we're seeing that the items that we find on the yellow sheet don't play a factor in determining significance because we feel like they're exact numbers. They're not, but we pretend that they are. What is ST? What? What is ST? It's, a, it's an F. Thank you. So how many significant figures are in the number 315? <laughs> Three, right? So how many should we have in this problem? Three. Where should I put the line? So at the second sentence. On this one, right? Yeah. That's correct. These two zeros are not significant, remember. <coughs> God bless you. Okay, how did that feel? Good. Good? All right, let's do some more examples. Fantabulous. All right, um, let's see. Let's do a metric system one. Let's say that we have 329 milligrams, and we would like to figure out how many kilograms that is. Do you feel like you know what you're doing? Go ahead and do this on your own. Okay, so you guys have the rules in your notes and they're also on the far left board. You guys have them in your notes as well. So the first rule is to take what you're given and put it over one. And then the second step so before you even go to your yellow sheet, do this. It'll help you to keep your thoughts organized. <coughs> All right, so now I'm ready for my yellow sheet. Can I go from milligrams to kilograms in one step? No, theoretically, yes. I mean, theoretically, yes, but you can't uh, according to the, green, to the yellow sheet. So my yellow sheet tells me that 1,000 milligrams is equal to one gram. So that's where I should probably start. <coughs> Excuse me. Where should the 1,000 go? On the top or on the bottom? All, all right, raise your hand if you think it should go on the top. Raise your hand if you think it should go on the bottom. The bottoms are correct. How do you know? It has to stay with that unit. But isn't it? Isn't um, it one million? One million? No, no. microgram. Um, you you maybe are seeing big M. <laughs> big M is big M stands for mega, and it's not the same as little M. Thank you so much for also making that mistake because I do see that as well. There are two M's, and they don't mean the same thing. Okay, so what goes on the top of this fraction? One G. One G, good. Is that what we're looking for? No. No, so we gotta do another one. If I'm looking at my sheet again, I can see that 1,000 grams is equal to one kilograms. 1,000 G on the bottom. Thank you, Cole. One KG on the bottom. Pretend that this isn't there. Is KG what you're looking for? Okay, so now you can just do math. All right. Do this math using your calculator or your noodle. It's okay if you can do this mentally. That's fine. Um, Duco, probably you can do this. This is going to be a little bit pain, but the metric system, like you can do this. You saw the answer in your mind instantly. I think so. Yes, because you're used to the metric system. All of these Johns here, it's going to be a struggle for them because we just we don't think in the metric system at all because we're weird Americans. We've been to space. We have been to space. Yes, that's true. 
<laughs> and it was all because of the English system. <laughs> Which is not true. Okay, did we get an answer? Demetrius? Demetrius. <laughs> that doesn't fit the narrative, Demetrius. Yes, Mason. Uh, uh, I believe it's 3.29 times 10 to the negative 4th, but I'm concerned about significant digits because 1,000 is only 1. Ah, but remember, looking at rule number 4, Mason, you're only going to look at the number in your original number that the problem is. So these numbers cannot determine significance. Oh. Because really, um, this pro this property of the is like there's infinite significance in this number. Yeah, that's what I was confused. Oh, yeah. Yes. So you're right. This would be um, times ten to the negative four. If you wrote your answer, perhaps maybe you wrote it like this. Wait. Yes. Yes. And so you have you do have to multiply a thousand times a thousand there. And if you're going to do this in one step, this work has to, like, okay, so please listen to this because I see this so much. If you're going to type in three, you can do this in one step. Type in 329 and then hit the divide symbol. But you need a parenthesis open after you put press divide. You don't need to close it. Your calculator doesn't need to know that, but it, you need to tell it order of operations. And so if you don't do this, what you're saying is 329 divided by 1,000, that answer times 1,000, because your calculator can't read your mind. It'll do what you tell it, but you're telling it to obey a different order of operation than what you want it to. So make sure you put that parenthesis there. Um, what is the unit that you should have? Kilograms. It is wrong if you don't have that number, or that unit rather. This is the correct number of significant figures. This would be the answer. You could also, this is also the correct answer. Now, when you see your homework, it'll say to use significant or um, use scientific notation when necessary. <coughs> what does that mean? when you have a really small number or a really big number, you should use scientific notation. So if you get something like 12 million, A, it's a waste of time and space on your paper to write all them zeros. So just put it into scientific notation. That would be 1.2 times 10 to the seven. Oh my Atlanta, that looks horrible. <coughs> I'll slow down a bit, here we go. 1.2 times 10 to the, not minus 7, but positive. Oh, the struggle is real. If you have any more than three zeros, it is super easy to lose track of all of those zeros if you have to write them more than one time. So this is also something that requires scientific notation. If you are having a hard time with scientific notation, come and see me and I'll help. So that's what I mean by when necessary. You can choose that for yourself. If you get a number and your answer is like 212 pounds, doesn't need it. You can put it in scientific notation if you want, but it's not necessary. <coughs> Does that make sense? So you kind of have to get to choose your own adventure on that a bit, but Use it if it's going to be, use it if it'll save you time and space. Otherwise, it's not necessary. All right, let's talk a little bit about English <coughs> to metric and in between. So sometimes you have to use a combination of all of the boxes on the yellow sheet. And how do you know if that's the case? You just have to look and see what you can find. There's also a couple of different ways you can solve different problems 
using different conversions. And so you and I might get different answers that are like, you know, slightly different and that's okay. So don't, don't force yourself to have the exact same number. Remember that last digit, the last significant figure is the one that can fluctuate. And so even if we get something that's slightly different, it's probably actually the same. Number. All right, let's do a couple of examples of this and then let me give you time as your own. All right, um, let me see. Let's say that I have thirty two point three pounds. And I would like to know how many <coughs> let's see how many milligrams that is. Okay, so you and I might do this problem differently. We might have different like steps in the procedure. We should get the same answer though if we're both doing it correctly. So if you think you know what you're doing, go ahead and start working on that one. I'm gonna give you another one as well. And then if you get through the pounds to milligrams, check out the liters to ounces as well. All right, I'm gonna do the pounds to milligrams. I'm going to start with what I know here, over one. And then right away before I even get my yellow sheet out, I'm going to put pounds <coughs> as my denominator unit. Now, I know because I tried to at least take ones that were multi-step, so I'm pretty sure you can't go from pounds to milligrams in one step, but I see that I could do pounds to grams. Do you see that? It's the first thing in the right box, the column in the right box. Yes. Words are failing me. So I see one pound equals 454 grams. Where does the one go, top or bottom? Um, bottom, or what? Where does the one go? Bottom. Bottom, bottom. bottom. yep, it goes on the bottom. And then 454 goes on top. How did I know that the one goes on the bottom? One pound has to stay together. <laughs> All right, so if I were to cancel my units, is gram what I'm looking for? Sad days. So let's do another one. Now can I go from grams to milligrams in one step? Oh, just through that marker. You can. There are, in one gram, 1,000 milligrams. So this time, where does the one go? Top or bottom? Bottom. It doesn't say how to get fluid ounces. It does. Um, fluid ounces and regular ounces are interchangeable. They are? Yes, because sometimes the thing you're measuring is juicy, so fluid ounces. Sometimes the thing that you're measuring is not juicy, so regular ounces. That's why the American system is, it's ridiculous. No, that's Hayden's. It's, it's the mystery meat line. Okay, so now if we cancel out these grams, is this the unit we're looking for? It is. Okay, so do the math. Okay, And since I gave away all my calculators, can somebody do the math for me, please? No. You can just take mine. I use it. No, you use it. Oh, no. No, I just said it. Say that again, Demetrius. 14,666,000 pounds. Okay. Holy balls. 32.3 times 454. 
Oh. Times 1,000. Okay, so I think this is probably a scientific notation one, right? Yes. Uh, how many sig figs should I have? And so I guess I ground. I guess I ground that to the seven. But honestly, that rounding is inconsequential because that last digit is the one that can fluctuate. So Wait, that one times that one times that one. Yep. Yep. These are these are like fraction multiplies. Would I get a different answer if I went pounds to kilograms? You shouldn't. You shouldn't. Do you get a different significant digit? Nope. Nope, because everything from the yellow sheet has infinite significance. The only thing in these problems that's determining your significance is that original measurement. <laughs> okay, so now for the liters to ounces, I'm just going to start a new slide for that. Okay, so remember that fluid ounces and regular ounces are the same thing. <coughs> I'm sorry. Okay, so can we go from one to the next? I No, but there's a bunch of different things you can do. You could go from liters to quarts. You could go from liters to gallons. Um and that's it. So I think that what would I do? If I were doing this by myself, I'm too lazy to get my fat ass off the seat and look at the um, yellow sheet. And so I would do this one because I know it by memory. So that's usually how I choose which way to do it. Like if I know it in my mind, that's what I'll do. If I don't know it, then I got to get up and get my yellow sheet, and that's a sad day. One gallon, 128 ounces. Does that say that on here? No, but. Okay, so like then the don't for, force yourself to go no. um, each step pitifully. I know this is going to kill you. This is going to kill you. All right. All right, so since I have to go now from gallons to. I'm going to have to go gallons to quarts. Quartz isn't what I'm looking for, but finally I can go from quarts to ounces. So in one quart, there are 32 ounces. All right, now I want you to try to do this with your calculators so that we can be sure that our calculator work is not going to be what kills old do. So I'm going to do Process though, right? You did it a different way. Yeah. What's your unit? Uh, ounces. How many significant figures should you have? Trace. How many do you have? Trace. So that's your answer. Urban. On the yellow sheet, 
there are two of them, like, ways to go a quarter to the year. I don't know if I'm talking at it, but one quarter is 0 0.9 or 6 liters. Yep. One liter is 5 cents. Yes. Just whichever one you want. It's the same thing. Yep. Yes, sir. Yep. It is. It is because, um, hang on a sec, Logan. It is fluid ounces because liter implies that it's a liquid. Or a gas, I suppose. But also a fluid. All right, so what I'm going to do now is um, stop my video. If you guys have questions, then just come and see me and let me know. And I'm going to hand out homeworks now.